What's going on peeps? Welcome back to Inside Boxing Brain. We are back online to talk about some fight news. Now, I wanted to react to the Triple G and Canelo Alvarez fight that happened on Saturday night, early hours of Sunday morning. First of all, my time prediction was right. Uh, the main card, or the main event, didn't start until at least 5.30 and I didn't get to bed till 6.30 in the morning and I was absolutely shattered. Um, it was worth it though, the fight was great. It did not necessarily live up to the expectation. It wasn't the best trilogy of all time, but it was still a great fight and I'm gonna talk about um, the strengths that each fighter displayed and a few of the weaknesses that each fighter displayed as well. Um, to recap, my prediction was close, but it wasn't on the money. Uh, Canelo did win, um, but he was unable to knock out Canelo, uh, Triple G with any damaging punches. So, again, we were close, but luckily we didn't uh, put any bets on that fight. Um, Canelo did look like he was troubling Gennady at times, uh, the speed of the jab was something that really um, was a big difference or a big key to victory in this fight. Um, Canelo looked like he held the centre of the ring from the first bell. Um, he understood that finding the range and setting the pace in the early rounds was going to help him close the show uh, as well. And even though Triple G tried to pick it up in the, in the latter rounds, you could tell that Canelo already had um, built up quite a sizable lead and also if he wanted to, he could start going through the gears and putting that hurt on Triple G. Um, both fighters were carrying injuries into the ring. That only became apparent watching the um, post-fight interviews. I think uh, Canelo has injured his hand. There's a ligament in his hand and um, that was stopping him from being able to turn into his punches and really put any power behind them. And Triple G actually has a shoulder injury, which you could tell was on his right shoulder because one of um, Triple G's main weapons has always been that right hand. And he looked so gun shy. He looked like he was apprehensive to throw that right hand. People were saying it's because he was worried about what was coming back. But that being said, Triple G can take a punch, he's never felt the, the canvas, he's never been put down, so he was obviously being gun shy. You could see that it was his first fight in maybe the last 10 years where his output was considerably less. His punch per round was the lowest it's been in a very long time. And in the build up to the fight, his trainer was saying that the, it was activity that was gonna overcome Canelo. And from the first round, he was just outperformed. The activity wasn't there. The pace was controlled by Canelo. Um, I was disappointed. Um, a few strengths for Triple G were that he, again, showed that he has got a steel chin and the heart of a lion. Um, no matter how hard you hit the man, you can't put him down and you can't break his will. And he was a very tricky fighter to break down. You could tell Canelo didn't know how to really get, let the combinations go because he felt that if he got too close and he would get caught by one of Triple G's punches. Um, Triple G, his legs looks like they were more active than his hands. Um, he was trying to get in and out, in and out to, to try and throw Canelo off so that he could then plant himself and let a punch go. But he couldn't get into a rhythm. The biggest trouble that he had in this fight was that Canelo did not let uh, Triple G settle into the rhythm. He looked like um, an old man from the start. He looked like he'd left it all in the gym. He, yes, his physique looked ripped and he was shredded, but there was, there was no snap in his punch. There was no speed. That jab, that shotgun jab that he's been famous for, which finishes people, it knocks people out wasn't there. Um, I really think his age has caught up to him. And it was a shame to see a fighter which is, who has been such a legend in the game, um, be troubled 
and not be able to perform and look slow, sluggish, tired and old. Um, both fighters embraced one another at the end and that again was a strength. It showed that they have learnt respect for one another. Before this fight, there was a lot of disrespect. Canelo was saying that he wanted to be laying over his body, watched him knocked out on the canvas. And Triple G was talking about Canelo's juicing um, case where he got busted for PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. So the fact that they embraced at the end of the fight was a major positive because again, it shows fighters that respect is earned within the ring and as warriors, once you've shared that many rounds with one another, you can't help but respect each other's warrior spirit. It doesn't mean that you have to like each other, which is exactly what Canelo let on at his post-fight press conference, is that he now definitely respects Triple G, but liking him is a completely different <laughs> question, which is fair enough. A few weaknesses. I, um, I don't think that Canelo has got that one-punch knockout power at 168. I think down at 160... He was a one-punch knockout artist, but I feel like the whole hype around Canelo being a knockout puncher because he's knocked out the likes of Amir Khan, I think are overhyped. Um, I think to this day, Triple G is still a one-punch, um, is a harder one-punch knockout artist than Canelo Alvarez. And I think in this fight, it was showing that his power was lacking. You know, he wasn't able to visually hurt or, you know, slow down Triple G in any of the rounds. Um, I think Morata actually visibly put more hurt on Triple G with the body shots. Um, I really thought that Canelo would invest more down to the body, bringing in those hooks low um, below the solar plexus but above the hips, in the gut. But he was gun shy. He didn't go to the body as much as we all expected. And before the fight, we were all speculating just how weak Triple G's body might be. So that was one area of weakness. But also it can be said that Triple G's defense was exceptional and Canelo was trying to go to the body as much as possible, but could only find that range um, with the odd few shots that he let off to the body. Um, a strength for um, Triple G is that I think that even though this fight was at 168, at his natural weight of 160, I still think that he is pound for pound number one in that division. Um, at 160, I don't think there are any fighters, even in, in the ranks coming up, who could really say that they've had a run like Triple G or they have the hype of Triple G or the mystique of the knockout ratio and the potential to be pound for pound king. So I still think if he drops down to 160 again, he can have a long run um, and many victories. I just think that he's found his bogeyman and his bogeyman is Canelo, Saul Canelo Alvarez. Um, but it is a strength because there's not many men in this on this planet who could beat Gennady Golovkin in a fight. And he has never touched the canvas in his professional career and he's never been knocked down, let alone been wobbled. Um, so his, his warrior spirit and his fighting code is 10 out of 10. Legend in the game, future Hall of Famer for sure. Um, so in summary... I was underwhelmed uh, by the result. I thought that it'd be a little bit more exciting. Triple G started too late in the fight. He waited until the ninth round or the eighth or the ninth round to really start letting those combinations go. And I didn't see one of those signature overhand rights up towards the top of Canelo's skull until the ninth round. Um, I think he was carrying an injury into this fight because he looked gun shy to me and for somebody who's been in there with Canelo for 24 rounds before that, I thought that he know he would have known that Canelo wouldn't have the power to finish him with just one punch, so he'd leave it all in the ring and maybe go out on his shield 
uh, and try and really get into a slug fest, you know, with Canelo sitting in the pocket um, and just throwing short, sharp power punches, which is what we fell in love with um, Triple G for. So very exciting times in the middleweight division now because he's still the champion. Um, Canelo looks like he's going to maybe go back to 175 and try and challenge Dimitri Bivol um, for the light heavyweight title. Um, or we could have a, a situation where Bivol comes down to 168 to try and challenge for the super middle um, weight titles, um, creating legacy for himself, being a two-weight world uh, champion, uh, and also making it a bit more of a level playing field because in the last fight, after the fight, everybody said, oh, you know, Canelo was the smaller man and, you know, he was fighting a much bigger man in Bivol and it wasn't fair, which is bullshit because he was talking about fighting Alexander Usyk not long ago. So, yeah, and there was a fight with Makabu as well. So, yeah, bullshit. But anyway, some key strengths and key weaknesses there for both fighters. I don't think Canelo is... Um, the killer that people give him the name of, uh, or the hype around. Uh, I feel like in his career, he's he's had the ability to fight the best fighters and he's been managed exceptionally. And that's led him to have um, a resume full of legendary Hall of Fame fighters. And for that reason, he will go down as a Mexican legend. But I do feel that there are fighters out there who can trouble... Uh, Canelo and at 33 I feel like maybe his best days are behind him you know where's he gonna peak from here where's he gonna go is he just gonna stay in the division for years and years and years just being the world champion um, or is he gonna start fighting these hungry young up-and-coming fighters um, which you know could prove troublesome he let slip that he doesn't want to fight any mexicans because he feels like he represents mexico and it would be a disgrace for him to fight another mexican fighter so there are some you know interesting fights out there for canelo as well but for the time being we're gonna have to see how the rematch with dimitri bivol pans out I don't want to see Triple G retire, but I do think it would be the most smart, intelligent thing for him to do at this stage in his career. Um, I don't want to see a legend like Triple G get knocked out by somebody who, you know, doesn't deserve it and who wouldn't have knocked him out at the peak of his powers because the first thing to go is you punch resistance and I don't want to see someone like that get hurt. He made around about $20 million for the fight on Saturday night. So I hope he sails off into the sunset and really enjoys his money with his family. Um, great fight. I really cannot wait for, for more boxing. Um, we've got some big fights coming up. Uh, notably, we have got um, Conor Ben and Chris Eubank. Um, and next week, I'm going to be doing a prediction video for that. Um, drop me a comment below in terms of how you feel the fight went and what you think both fighters should do next. It's Inside Boxing Brain. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to my channel and I look forward to speaking to you all in the next video.